Going back to the ship? Yeah, I'm heading back. Oh, shit. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> what, did, oh, what the hell, hell did you do? Rick, what did you do? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> what the hell? Holy shit! Whoa! <laughs> We're on fire! Sorry, everyone, but I've got to take this one on solo. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Your lord and savior, Nathan Hamilton. That's right. Bask in my glory. I am here all by my lonesome because Nick has not played the rest of Elden Ring and doesn't want to be spoiled on it. Me? I don't give a fuck. I mean, I, well, I kind of do give a fuck, but at the same time, it's a Soulsborne game and... I, uh, never mind. I, I have a love-hate relationship with Soulsborne games, as in, I love to talk about them, but sometimes I hate playing them. Key key factor being, you know, Dark Souls Two. There's certain things in that game that, you know, I love and I love talking about, but the game overall, in terms of its how it's com how it's put together, is frustrating as all hell. My favorite Soulsborne game is Bloodborne. I I don't think that's much of a secret. I just love the setting. I love the I love the enemies. I I just love that game. It's just so well put together. Hey Sony, what the hell? Why aren't you, why haven't you put that on PC yet? I mean the the PS Five's out now. The PS Five is out. There's no need for you to hold back. Probably one of the best games from the PS Four. Just you know on the. Uh, Okay, so yeah, I am here by myself, and I know that Caleb's going to be down in the comment section letting you know uh, that you can skip all the stuff that I'm saying right now. And by the way, if you're down there, Caleb, uh, still good to see you even after these eight years doing your job. <sighs> it, anyway, I'm hoping that all of you will enjoy this. This is Maxor's An Incorrect Summary of Elden Ring Part 2. So, without further ado... Shall we? We shall. Oh, let me turn the volume up a little bit, because I turned it down because I was playing God of War down here on my PlayStation 2. I'm testing out this new HD thing that is on there, and I'm just trying to make sense of, you know, see if it, it works good. Turns out it does. But there's another one coming in on Wednesday that I'm going to try out, and if it works better, awesome. Oh, yeah, we have a video to react to. Here we go. Do not play this video in the dark, it is very scary. Ah, uh, the lands between. So beautiful, so tranquil. Until I showed up. Welcome back everyone to Elden Ring, one of the games of all time. Featuring deep role-playing mechanics, riveting combat, cool math games, happy we hosts, and probably a story so convoluted that entire YouTube channels exist just to tell you about it. I do not know much about the lore, but I do know one thing. Melania is definitely the Blade of Mikola. When we last left off, we had endured great pain and suffering in our quest to destroy the cast of Percy Jackson. But do not worry, the pain has only just begun. And if you somehow haven't seen the first part, then uh... That's fine. I have also seen JoJo. So, with the Elden Ring shattered and scattered among America's inbred dipshits, it's time to tear our way through enemies aplenty, attempt to find a girlfriend, almost impossible, and test the true strength of my hardware, because this will be our greatest challenge yet, and also the easiest challenge for the rest of the game. Where, where did I go just now? Huh. Oop. Last time on Blatant Copyright Infringement Fair Use Edition, we struggled to take Grandpa off his life support with violence, deliver Garfield his precious lasagna, <laughs> and finally convince Joseph Hussein Biden to end it all with nuclear fire. 
I'm dead serious. Wow, that was a uh, fucking crazy. I better fast travel to the third impact Evangelion. We're moving oh. at a real breakneck speed. You know, just when I was thinking this game can't possibly get bigger, it gets significantly bigger. I'm not sure if the developers are okay, especially since they're trapped in the same room as that man. It turns oh. out, nuclear weapons are a great way to excavate the Earth, and there are no long-term consequences, which means we've got an entirely new area to explore, hiding just beneath our feet. And no, we're not going to visit the Blue Man group again. I still have the nightmares. Wait a second, this is Michigan. I need to leave as soon as possible. Detroit. Ah, it's a woman. I'm possessed of four arms and that is what tickles thy fancy? Pringles can. Are thou of no more brain than stone? Can you speak English? Can you throw yourself into a wood chip? Listen, I have never seen a caucasoid run that fast. They kept yelling go white boy go. Okay. I shall need thy help to run my errands. May I ask why? No, I'm going through a tunnel right now. Your signal is breaking up. Typical. I apologize for that. I may not have known Fucking at the time, but this was the beginning of an absolute rabbit hole. One that would lead me to dangerous and disturbing territory in the future. This shit makes Blighttown look like a playground. Welcome Whoa. everyone to the Nether Fortress. It's three rooms long and filled with naked and hostile women, which is my preferred enemy. I've always wanted to be a police <laughs> officer. This is just like my favorite Japanese anime, Kill the Cats. And if that's a little what? too intense for you... Kill a kill. Oh. You don't worry. There are dozens of skinwalkers waiting around every corner. Just knowing that makes me feel very comfortable. But my favorite enemy in the entire level is in fact myself. Me. I am the boss of the level. Hey, what's up, guys? Max over here. We're out here going after Shadow Peter Pan. I'm forced to fight the only bitch that I trust. Gonna lay a fucking smack down on Dark Link. This battle is a unique concept, to say the least. It perfectly copies and uses your entire inventory. And yes, this does mean you can unequip your weapon and laugh at him for the whole fight. He literally cannot damage me in this state. Not that you would need it, because if there's anyone in the world who knows how to keep me down, it is myself. This boss's weakness Agreed. is naked anime women. But overall, it was a great experience taking revenge upon the the man who ruined my life. Unfortunately, as a result of that battle, I have destroyed a part of myself. I have killed my artistic integrity. Hey guys, I built an entire torture chamber for animals in hardcore Minecraft. And if you want to see how I exterminate the innocent, stick around until I kill my son. I. Oh god, I can feel my. Uh... I can feel my age. I feel my age just from seeing the amount of where Minecraft was versus where Minecraft is. You're a boomer, Nate. Just accept it. I feel like if you showed this video to a Victorian child, he would die instantly. And speaking of dying, we've returned again to Jump Scare Junction. That's right, I lied to you. I give Dora the wrong directions. This area <laughs> is an identical copy of the last time, complete with the same puzzle, the same enemies, and the exact same boss, but this time he's glowing. Just like this video. Now don't get me wrong, I love beating Canadians to death, but why? Please do not subject me to more Canuck and boss torture. Now as for the rest of the area, it's pretty nice, you know, kinda short, introduces the brand new sapient sphere type enemy. That's okay though, I too have seen Steel Ball run. But what I really want to find Damn. is this knife, which is a surprise tool that will help us later. With this, I may now cause many kitchen nightmares. Let's uh, go talk to someone who actually knows what's happening right now. Oh god, here Not we you. go again. Though the alternative isn't much better. Hey, hey, Tarnished. Yeah, hi. I see you come to me with... <laughs> it's, uh, it's Seth. Seth Zeta, he's like, hi there, Traveler. How may I assist you to... Oh my god, you have this blade. I'm gonna take this blade. Don't take my blade. God damn it, he took my blade. LondonBinKnife.png So you know what it is then? No, but if you desire a refund, I must redirect you to Ronnie the Witch and her Carian Call Center. Only then can you rebate your purchase. Oh, I've met Ronnie before. She's, uh, interesting. But I must warn you, Tarnished, the temptation of a blue gash is strong beyond belief. Uh... I, too, have felt the call of her puppet hands upon my tackle. Just imagine, Tarnished, what those four armpits must smell I'm like. going to leave now. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Welcome everyone to Horrors Beyond Comprehension, a land of the hands as it were, the Finky Dinky. Making my way here was a treacherous affair. I had to dodge the magical artillery using my immense skill. This place, however, is anything but safe. I would describe it a bit like the Spongebob perfume department. You simply need to get through it, but you will lose a part of yourself. There are hands everywhere, in the ground, on the ceiling, and within my nightmares. They are 90% of the enemies, and the remaining 10% kind of remind me of myself in a really strange way. My name is 
Yoshikage Kira. I'm 23 years old and making YouTube videos. As it turns out, the Queen of Caria going insane in Hogwarts had implications for the kingdom, and one of those implications, uh, kind of, kind of slaps. You know, like a ham. I too would kill myself if I was written by J.K. Rowling. I can't even search for pictures of normal knuckles on Google because I keep getting this fucking echidna. Human knuckles just makes it worse. Now, uh, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So after dealing with my Oni-chan and killing the only normal people for miles, the game just gives up and has us fight a ghost instead. I've always wanted to kill a white woman. Also, I'm available at this address. This fight is actually an iteration of the previous Tree Sentinel boss, so it's a really good thing that I beat him. You could say I have a lot of practice with the moveset. This time, however, we've got a copious amount of magic, even greater speed, and a horse ghost, which implies that there is a horse hell. Horses don't belong in the battlefield. They belong in the McDonald's menu. I can't even turn the bastard into glue anymore. This is just like George Orwell's Animal Farm. In summary, this boss is good, but nothing we haven't seen before or will see in five minutes. The magic earth her a really comfortable spot in B tier right next to herself, but that is a story for uh, part 19, so for now I'm just gonna send her to a farm upstate. By the way, I've played this game for uh, 130 hours and I uh, haven't slotted a spell. Now as a full metal consequence of my vehicular manslaughterita, we have finally unlocked Ronnie's Rise and my favorite part of the game, Ningyo Romansu Shimureta. Honestly, I'm a big fan of the writing on this one, I just don't really care for the uh, Blythe arc where he eats the classroom. But to get to that, we have to fight the most dangerous and powerful boss of them all, the copy-paste key. If we can teach magic to fucking dragons and dogs, I don't even know why we try. The most powerful wizards can be found in a zoo. You know, at least he, uh, he, uh, um, uh, uh, what? He, he's gone. He has chosen peace. I guess all that's left to do now is enter up Toyota High School so I can finally meet the love of my life. Ah! ah. How the fuck did you do that? Do what? Oh, hiya gozaimasu. She says, her long hair swaying in the Among Us Morbius Among Us sus. So, uh, why are you here exactly? Uh, uh, oh god, the Morbius means when will they fucking die? Never. The answer is never. Oh god, the game actually prompts you. I really gotta think about this one. Tell you what, I'm also in the business of killing God. I want to restore the good old-fashioned values upon which we used to rely. Is that a bad thing? For you. Now, are you going to join or not? Oh god, she doesn't know I'm a sub. Wonderful. Your first mission is to kill my brother, Satan. You can find him inside his volcano. Are you trying to kill me? Don't come back until one of you is dead. Well, I guess that's well, it then. That's Time that. to take the elevator so I can talk. Time to go simp. To my sleep paralysis demon. Greetings, Tarnish. Oh, oh god, not him. It is I, Brian Dawn, from Family Guy. Please leave me alone. I'm not really here right now, so please. God damn it, it's an answering machine. At the tone, please record your message. Finally, it's time to continue playing the game, and to get to the aforementioned volcano, we must first ascend. We have to elevate our consciousness so I can have my date with Ronnie senpai Fortunately for us, there is an elevator. Thank god the Mountain of Death is wheelchair accessible. You just gotta watch out for the, uh, falling rocks. I'm beginning to get the impression that I'm not wanted here. So, we enter the absurdly large elevator, custom built and designed for the new American male, and place our keys in the ignition like a sedan. Welcome every pony bazinga to the Altus Plateau, land of the fourth demigod and his magic treehouse. I originally meant to go to the volcano immediately, but this area is the world's biggest set of dangling keys. There are two paths we can take to traverse this area. The road of proper, upright civilization, or the forest of immaculate pain. You know, I did both of them, but this one is funnier. Welcome everyone to the worm people dimension, a region totally unique in how it decides to kill me. You see, the inhabitants have a special status effect called death, and the effect of death is that it kills you, rather painfully, and uh, there's quite a few of them. My favorite example is definitely Wormface, who is called that for no reason. All of his attacks are basically instant kills. I think it could be better to take the stealthy approach here. Hey guys, Maxor here, and today we're gonna be sneaking into Big Shell. Raiden, you have to stop the Facebook algorithm, it's giving people pronouns. So after navigating the Impaled Jail, or just teleporting past it, because you can do that, we continue exploring Bikini Bottom so I may find the Maniac. Just don't turn around on the bridge, because, uh... He is there. So for the next part of our journey, we make our way to the Windmill Village, which is, uh... Uh... Apparently I've seen Midsummer. I know what the fuck is going on here. Next thing you know, they're gonna put you in a barn and set you on fire. Along with a bunch of other dead animals. Movie was fucked up. Fun time. You know, I may be a fan of older women, but this is a bit much. These bitches really do be reenacting the plot of Midsummer in the local retirement center. Holy shit! <laughs> you made a Midsummer reference. Hell yeah! 
after. Honestly, this area is pretty dope as long as you don't make them angry. Don't worry, women are very easy to calm down. So with our domestic situation now under control, we walk for three seconds until the boss just kind of approaches you, just like Dio and his stand. Welcome back, everyone, to the official IGN walkthrough. And today we're going to be fighting Slenderman. Gotta collect those eight pages. His attacks are fast, really fast, and his combos are longer than my video schedule. If you ever think you're safe against this boss, think harder. This man goes harder than a police officer in the Black Sea. And to make things worse, we have a second phase which made me scream audibly. Finally, the spaghetti coat. I haven't really fought a boss that required an exorcist before, but thankfully, the priest was better at the game than me, so, uh... Bye. That's not the last time we're gonna see him, although I wish it was. So with Friedrich Fastbear once again confined to his pizzeria, we approach the fabled gate of healthy eyeballs, and after being welcomed very nicely by the residents, we catch a glimpse of our next destination. The next destination hurts my eyes. All you have to know is that I really want to get there, because I am a moth, and also this anime girl. Naturally, my first instinct was- Wait, you're Quinn? Hmm the heads of the front door, like the feds outside my house, but these instincts were not correct. Also, some people say my videos are too fast, so here's a dog. So instead of whatever that is, we need to take the side route to get in. I have to skulk cantankerously towards my devilish teeth. But upon reaching the back rooms, we find that the way is blocked by the dreaded, most powerful enemy of the entire game. That's right, the copy-paste key is back, and this time he's tired of my shit. Oh god. This battle is really difficult, not because the moveset is new, but because I have exhausted my horse jokes. To put this another way, he's tougher than my dad and hits harder than his belt. Not much is different this time around though, except for the damage. That is very new. This is just like my Redmi Note 11 Pro when I criticize the Chinese government. Overall though, this boss is a very cool reskin and a literal gatekeeper for the content ahead, which is why I decided to exploit him using my horse, just like the Mongols. Absolutely peak game design right here, I'm very impressed. One second, guys, I need to answer my phone. So, with the evil lies of capitalism out of the way, it's finally time to head inside. This is what we've been building up for, for 13 entire minutes. And when I got there, I was so taken aback by what I saw that I fell off a cliff and died. Great start. Welcome everyone to Listerine, royal capital, a land that pleases the eyes and destroys my ears. The sound of the Smurf Jamboree is fucking inescapable. We're gonna hear it for the rest of the level in the form of my tinnitus. Look at this shit, look how fucking big it is. And yes, we can visit all of that, the entire city. Do you see that dragon? You can climb it. These enemies, they can climb me when I am six feet under. Enter the buildings, peruse the streets, find new enemies and die to them. We've got a little bit of everything here in Portland, Oregon. This game is Dark Souls 4, 5, and fucking 6, so I ask again, are the developers okay do they sleep so after our no they do not there is no sleep there is only elden ring as i gotta say hopefully this this game made enough money to where everyone at the studio got paid big money i'm hoping so because hidenaki miyazaki is ruthless when it comes to game development i mean he, he's one of the best out there but jesus i i can't imagine working for him it'd be like work all the time just you you wouldn't work you would literally have an adrenaline drip like just jabbed into your neck and you'd just be like working 24 7 365 until the game is done and then after it's done then you're going then he's really going that's when the real work starts that's when the bug fixes happen and all I, oh god our encounter with band class, we move throughout the city, becoming acquainted with its welcoming residents. And there are so many different paths that it's actually hard to talk about. You can go down the streets and die, go through the storm drain and be dragged to the depths of hell, where the Catholics go. Or you can go to the bad side of town and die to the exploding worm. I hesitate to call this a level because this is a goddamn experience. Just don't enter this innocuous well because you'll have to fight the poo and piss men. Seriously, this is an entire dungeon in and of itself, and it's more convoluted and confusing than a woman. I want to get off Mr. Miyazaki's wild ride. Please let me see my family. But that is a story for, uh, probably never, because it's guarded by the demigod of incest. I will have to deal with him later, preferably after he stops dealing with me. So once I finish up preening the garden and becoming one with the graveyard, we ascend to the next level of consciousness and begin making our way to the palace above. It's pretty okay. beautiful, but I would suggest installing railings, because I am stupid. And also this anime. Speaking of which, here's the, uh, next boss. He just kind of appears there. Gotta fight Casper the Unfriendly Piss. Now, I could get into this boss, maybe talk about how he helped my insides experience fresh air, but he is up uh, very phoned in, and we're going to get quite familiar with him later. And also, he up uh, has a stand, so that's how you know he's gay. 
Since this boss is technically a memory, we're just gonna forget that he exists. Maybe should have done that during the fight. So all that's left to do now is get into the giant tree so I can finally kill God. I've always had a grudge against that guy. After all, he made the British Isles, and some crimes cannot be forgiven. Ah, if it isn't my old friend. The tarnished who gets no bitches and stacks no paper. How are you alive exactly? How are you still single? Once I called the demigods family, but that was before I became racist. Though your tenacity deserves praise, it is for naught. For I have never lost a debate. What the fuck is wrong with you? Cancel culture strikes again. Oh god, this fight is good. Like, really fucking good. I just didn't sign up to play Sekiro today. That quirked up white boy do be busting it down sexual style, and his secret is methamphetamine. This shit is fast. Very, very fast. Faster than a Genshin player's trajectory to prison. So fast that the hammer doesn't even wait for phase two. They call him Home Depot DoorDash because he's delivering the tools straight to you. Also, yes, I can make his weapon change color at will. It's like a speed run for epileptics. But what makes this fight difficult is not just the speed, not just the mobility, and definitely not just the damage. Although there is a lot of that, but huh. just how many fucking moves this man has, and all of them have different attack speeds, so have fun with that. This time around, it's like the Valkyrie at the end of uh, God of War. Jesus, the Queen Valkyrie, Seagrin. Oh my god, uh, that was that fight was absolute hell. Uh, we've got daggers, hammers, spears, a lot of swords, and a little bit of trolling. I remember when Dark Souls bosses were just an obese man. We were so young. Thanks, but this Paul. does beg the question, why was Morgoth just hanging out in front of Stormvale? Was he getting his groceries? Did he use a VPN? The only assumption I can make is that I'm he sure just really hates you, and yeah, I can fucking feel that. I also hate me. So to come out on top, we've got to remain quick, brace the inside of our asshole, and verify our online sources with correct My documentation, sources. because this is the hardest boss so far, and the easiest boss for the rest of the game. So whether we're delivering pizza or attempting oh. deicide, Morgoth will bring you the Home Depot experience, whether you're ready or not. And the answer is usually not. That fight was the fucking bomb. It was a hard-fought battle, but now it is time for me to claim my rightful throne. Fuck, I'm Bitch. going to make God pay for this. All we have to do is go through the, um... Oh, this probably has an explanation, but something tells me I'm not going to like it. Oh well, time to go. My actual objective is worse than this. Much, much worse than this. So, uh... Yeah, that's great. Look, I need help getting into the glow stick tree. Do you have any shears? Oh, why didn't you say so? No reason in particular. Nah, don't worry about him. He's, uh, doing stretches. For the next 5,000 years. What? Oh shit, that's Badger! Anyways, you need to, uh, burn the tree. Excuse me? You need to go to Giant Mountain burn and burn the tree. someone to death. I want that shit to look like a road flare. You are scaring me. The pain is immense and without limit. How about I just go kill Satan instead? You cannot run from me! <laughs> I wonder if that's what Badger says to all of his viewers. You cannot run from me! <laughs> that is awesome. Holy shit. Ugh. I mean, you got Seth. You got... He got Badger. That's... Dude. How? <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Mountain of Agony, both in the lore and in gameplay, but mostly gameplay. Home of the fifth demigod, Satan. Literally just Satan. Lucifer, the big D, if you will, who has made his home inside of a literal volcano where he intends to commit blasphemy in peace. Just one problem. We gotta climb that shit ourselves. And the main way up is, uh... A big-ass motherfucking rope ladder. A little oh my bit God. linear. I Don't. call it the Habsburg family tree because this shit is a circle, one with a higher population of apes than Twitter.com. My favorite part was the horrifying darkness of my Appalachian camping trip. Something is after. Mm. 
He said it wrong, but I forgive it. For me, but I don't know what it is. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still a lot to discover, but half of it is igneous rock, and what remains is a bit of special. Just gotta take out this enemy over here when suddenly bird jump scare. It feels a bit like every level collaborated to make this one. We've got people, monkeys, spastic robots, and you better believe that the hands are back. We even get to see the, um, the handyman himself. He's getting really out of hand this time. You could say that I have my hands full. This is hands down the stupidest joke in the video. So after climbing up, are you sure? with all those puns you don't need a hand uh little bit you know three ladders in a row we gaze over a cliff where a pun patches just breaks my fucking skeleton guess i have to climb all the way back up the top of the mountain is really fun though especially when my computer decides to work it's like disneyland for victorian peasants or just yugoslav war criminals i think satan might be up to something it's just a guess though so after three days of assorted undersea mischief making we finally arrive at the volcano manor but at that size it's more like a volcano gated community little did i know what i was getting into starting with the um red. You know, like all the flags this is giving me. I feel like I'm inside of a gaming PC. Maybe this woman can give us more <laughs> info. Hello, Tarnished, and welcome to the Red Manor. Feeling creative today, what? aren't we? Is that I am the virtual YouTuber of this mansion, Tanith, and this is Gug. Gug. Gug is in pain. Gug. Aren't we all? Anyways, can I interest you in joining the forces of Satan? We offer coupons. For what exactly? Mostly funerals, but sometimes Tesco. Well, you know what? I do want to attack God, and the mood lighting here is sick as fuck. Where do I sign? That's not uh, hold on, hold on. Let me. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I wonder if it's in the the cast list. Is no, there is no cast list. Oh, damn it. Oh, you don't sign. You kill. What? We crave innocent blood, traveler, and I expect a sufficient donation. After all, you are what you eat, and I am a child at heart. I think I chose the wrong voice actor. Hail Satan! Well, I guess since that's, I... That's... No, that's still fucking terrifying. Serve Satan now. My outfit needs to get a little edgier, and my weapons need to become a little veggier. Potatoes aren't the only things that these can feel. And as a fresh recruit to the Army of Darkness, I now have access to the office break room. It is surprising. Surprisingly nice, so long as you avoid the souls of the damned. I do not care who the IRS sends, I am not paying taxes. Also, half my fellow. Oh, fuck. Damn it. Uh, uh, I'll have to. Hey, post production Nate, make sure you insert the video back in. Damn it, OBS. Half my fellow demons have scoliosis, so uh, let's just collect our first target, you know, instead of talking to them. And if I'm going to kill the innocent, I might as well do it with some chill beatings by Dr. Dre to relax and study to. I think we might be the bad guys. Just kidding, I don't think. Oh shit, wrong door. Congratulations, traveler! You have proven yourself my finest sin! My sins are unforgivable. You get to meet Satan now. <laughs> no, what's the occasion? Dinner! Can I leave now? Have fun! Uh, hi there, Satan. Did you fall from heaven? I don't think he liked that one. <laughs> Hey guys, Maxor here, and today we're gonna be trapped in, um, hell. Yeah, so turns out war crimes and orgies are sins, don't ask. So now that we're in hell, I get to meet all of my favorite heroes, such as Ronald Reagan, and also all the landlords that Mal killed. But to navigate this new Damn. landscape of fire and brimstone, we must venture into the many circles of hell, each one complete with their own trials and punishments, but mostly punishments. Now as for me, I was sent to the circle of greed for being a YouTuber, and my punishment is continuing to make this video. It is four in the morning. Now the first thing you see in this level, and I mean the first thing, is an anchor direction. This tells us that we're in the circle of Lust, where all the Genshin players reside. You know, I'm a really big fan of uh, Sugma Kokomi. Boy, I sure do love love being surrounded by women. Genshin Impact video very soon. Just gotta turn this corner and uh. 
Why is he just standing there? Well, I'm sure he won't be bothering me uh, anytime later. Oh my <gasps> god, it's him, the Caprese Demon. Now for our next stop in every Denny's ever made, we're heading into Hell's Assisted Living Center, which is filled with unbaptized infants and the disabled. It was at this moment that I knew I was not being punished, but that I was the punishment. Also, Jesus Christ, this is darker than Ethiopia. After which, we find ourselves in the circle of gluttony, because the residents are a bit, uh, a bit sluggish. I know, very funny stuff. It's time for some fun volcano facts with Maxor. Did you know that lava cannot hurt you as long as you are backstepping? Try to do it in real life. Actually, at this point, the lava is more of a suggestion. Summer enjoyers be like, at least there be no snow. Oh boy, I sure do love taking a walk in the great state of Arizona. So after we're finished navigating the, um, kinky neighborhood, we head into the next circle of hell, the heresy, which is accessed when I pull You're a bridge saying? out of the room temperature lava. This is where God puts all the papists after being dragged into the storm drain. They <laughs> Sisyphean <laughs> Punishment Everywhere. is that they have to get laid on Gmail. Delete every other website. You have to fuck and suck on Gmail. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be attending mass to steal the wine. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ, it's Oogie Boogie and Mar Stay Puff Marshmallow Man's baby. Hey guys, welcome back to my 600 pound death. And on today's episode, we're going to be fighting the skinniest Reddit mod. This is not what I meant when I said I wanted jiggle physics. I think this boss may have had a few too many, uh, communion wafers. How many of those do you have to eat before it's considered one entire Jesus? This is your body, broken for me. Now, unlike the other foreskin brother, the absolute girth of this man might make you think we're in for a slower fight. But you are wrong. That would make the game easier. He is even faster than that. And that just makes me go from depressed to impressed. And just like last time, his second phase is absolute body horror. Genuinely just the scariest shit I've ever seen in my life. Please consult your doctor before engaging in any Nico- Jesus Christ. It's Nico Cotto Avocado. Boss. Jesus. Genuinely just the scariest shit I've ever seen in my life. Please consult your doctor before engaging in any Nico Cotto maxing. I think that, uh... I think I'm gonna be here for a few more minutes. But finally, the bloated design. Body positivity. No, I have body negativity. Also, holy shit, this music goes hard. This is an absolutely inappropriate boss theme for the inside of a Walmart. I think it's about time that we shave off some of that excess skin. Come on, do it. Give me your skin. If you aren't comfortable in your own flesh, you should pull it off. So now that I've officially shot Biggie Biggs, we can finally grab the, um... Uh, and continue on our route towards the average Californian summer. Me being sent to hell, they forgot to take my Bluetooth speaker away. That's right, we're finally here. The heart of the beast. Home of deceitful serpents and their evil minions. You know, Washington. Also, um... More ladders. But honestly, it's a bit, uh easy to get lost in here. Personally though, I don't think there's much here that we haven't already talked about, besides the uh... The Egged One, just your standard committee of child skinners. So, we're just gonna teleport straight to the boss, which is the actual way you do it because of the reasons why. Alright Satan, I've served you for too long. Now prepare to feel my- Oh, wait a second. Jesus Christ, Maxor, that song goes so hard. What's its name? Main menu. Welcome everyone to Doom Internalizing My Abuse. And today, we're going to be fighting the, uh... We're going to be, uh, uh, we're going to Google how to kill him. Because as it turns out, the reptile exhibit is in need of some heavy ordinance, of which I am an expert. The Serpent Hunter is, and I quote, on some anime shit, a weapon of mass destruction specifically built to kill just snakes. You know, like a secretary bird. It's also, uh, three feet from the entrance. That's like giving chocolate out in a dog pound. God may give me his toughest battles, but so too do we get his largest gun. We just went from Storm Ruler to Storm Meter Stick. This fight is the coolest shit I've ever seen. It is so satisfying to use this weapon, and the damage is absolutely biblical. My favorite part was when Kane beat his brother to death with a rock. The only drawback is that you are too strong, and dodging him is a little easy because the snake will signal every attack by pogging. But if I had to choose a boss to be easy, this one is pretty fucking up there. And trust me, I know about fucking up. Just ask the war crime trials. <laughs> I have something to admit, guys. I didn't really kill anyone in the war. I only kill people like you. Tomorrow. But as for this boss, his difficulty does not get in the way of the fun, of which there is plenty. I think the best attack is the one where he slimes me at the Kids' Choice Awards. Plus, I am always down for animal abuse, especially after the animal abuses me. So, with that out of the way, I think it's about time that we graduate this noodle from endangered to extinct. Oh, Jesus. Aren't you dramatic? It's not over. Demigod of Mount Gelmir, number 15. Chills? <laughs> what? 
Raider Riker. What? They got... It appears that you were trying to cut off this... my pet snake. So. That's not the real chills. I call bullshit. That's the real chills. Number fifteen. I want the number fifteen. In return, I will now cut off yours. The last thing you want on your journey to hell is to join the Serpent King as family. But as it turns out, that might be what you get. Oh my fucking god. It's finally him. It's Satan. I'm your biggest fan. Oh, uh, <clears throat> welcome everyone to the second phase of life, also known as death. And today we're going to be fighting the human centipede along with everyone he's ever consumed. That's right. This entire time, we were participating in the world's most complicated buffet. Not to mention, I'm carrying the souls of four entire demigods, so I just delivered Rykard his fucking pizza. But if you want to get eating, first you have to get eaten, buy an immortal snake, and live on him like a tumor. That's called making a deal. Now as for the gameplay, it's um, a little intense. You know, kind of spooky. Kind of makes me cry. Because this boss, on top of his normal moveset, can use every snake attack, just like Metal Gear Solid. But that isn't even the dangerous part. That happens when he unleashes the 50 goddamn explosive skulls at the loudest possible volume, and then dips my screen into a vat of hot oil. I guess hell was just built on a missile system. I could not tell you what's happening on the screen right now. The best way I can describe this fight is that it gives brain damage, just like playing Valorant, but in a good oh. way, unlike playing Valorant. Even still, this battle is not about that. It is all about the spectacle, the weaponry, and of course, the violence. It is a gimmick fight done absolutely correct, even if it hurts my eyes a bit. But if this fight gets one thing right, it is definitely style. And while this battle may be long, you know, like a, like a, like a cat, goddamn does it deliver. Man, you two are a match made in hell. Hey, so, uh, I might have killed Satan. You fucking what? Yeah, so, uh, where did she go? Gung. Oh. Gung. She's eating what? Oh. Okay, so there we go. Iron Mouse, Badger, Shinpai, Seth, what you know, Uber Danger. <laughs> okay, beat sir, as chills. <laughs> Ah, oh, damn. Gug, gug as gug. <laughs> That's awesome. I just love the fact that he got Badger and Seth involved in this. But Iron Mouse, okay. Glad to know uh, we have uh, we have that. So, anyway. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, to absorb that many memes in such a short amount of time, my brain is literally deep fried. If I could pull my brain out of my head, I it would probably resemble that of fried chicken. It's, oh, God. Maxor, you go fucking hard when it comes to making these. Jesus, God, you, like, I bow down to the editing chops that this man has. Good lord. I have no idea how the hell he even conceptualizes and makes like makes these videos a reality. God. A anyway, so yeah, that was that was Maxor, uh, an incorrect summary of Elden Ring part 2. Hopefully like this like I know there's gonna be a part three now because this video or this game is just too damn big to be encapsulated in not just one but two videos, and also the fact that he, I'm still blown away he got Badger. I'm still blown away that Badger. Well, Badger seems to be the kind of guy who would agree to uh, do a cameo in a video like this because you know 
Badger is a big, filthy, disgusting memer, and we love him for it. But anyway, that was uh, Max Orr's uh, An Incorrect Summary of Elden Ring Part 2. If you want to see the first part, uh, feel free to head over to Max Orr's channel by clicking his name in the title of the video. If you want to see this part, then you can actually click the link to the original video in the description right down there. And as always, until next time, everybody, signing off, I'm your Lord and Savior, Nathan Hamilton. Take care, everybody. Peace. Thank you.